Hello, we are Michelle Wood and Bronte Cohens. Today, we will be exploring the Desmos Activity Builder. It is a web app that can be used for graphing and exploring math concepts. Before we get started, don't forget to subscribe and hit that bell to enable notifications for our channel by clicking our logo during the video. Also, leave us a comment or check out our related videos by clicking the pop-up cards in the upper right corner. Here's how to get started with the Desmos Activity Builder. To get started with the Desmos Activity Builder, you will need to go to teacher.desmos.com. Once you go to teacher.desmos.com, you will probably need to sign in. After signing in, on the left-hand column of the screen under the menu, you will select Custom Activities to access the Activity Builder. This is the page where all of your activities will be stored once you begin creating activities. To create a new activity, you will select New Activity in the upper right hand corner and you will be asked to name your activity, to determine the share settings, and also to enter a, an activity description. There are two different share settings. You can select the share setting, the first share setting, if you would like any teacher to be able to use and modify your activity with their students. You can also select to keep it private where only you can see it and share it with your students. The activity description provides your students and or other teachers with a brief overview of what your activity will include. Once you have completed all of this information, you can select create new activity and it will take you to the activity builder landing page. You will notice in the upper left hand corner the title of your activity. You will also notice a box with a plus sign. This box represents what the students will see on their screen as they're progressing through the activity. You can add as many screens as you would like by clicking on the plus button. Under that are all of the components that you can add to the different screens of your activity. You can add as many components or as few components on each page as you would like. There is also an option for you to provide your students with a calculator. For our demonstration, we will set up an activity that progresses from the warm up or the bell ringer to their closure or the reflection of the lesson. So, this would be a good way to structure a class where you're setting it up so that there's a blended learning opportunity for your students. And we'll start with a short warm up where we're asking the students one multiple choice question. At the very top, you will type in your multiple choice question. Then we're going to label it so that the students know that this is the warm up question. After you've entered that information, you can enter as many or as few options for your students as you would like. If you are using the checkboxes or multiple choice, make sure that you select the one that is correct. There is also an option for you to enter a graph or an image, and you can also set it where students would have to explain their answer or the rationale, or if you want students to be able to see the response of their classmates, you can keep this box selected as well. If you wanted to make any edits to the question, you will click on these three boxes three dots in the upper right hand corner and you can convert it to check boxes if you wanted to uh, pose a different type of question or structure it differently. You can also randomize the answer choices. Always have the students have a selected option where they won't be able to skip this question and you can change the layout of how the questions appear. If you wanted to delete this component altogether, you would select delete component. The next part of our lesson is going to be the notes or the direct instruction. And this is an option for you to add your students um, a variety of things where they can either review a previous lesson that they may be struggling with or an enrichment for students that may be ahead 
or if you wanted to provide your students with an actual lesson, you could upload videos and notes so that students can have that and take notes on their physical notebook or in their binders. So for this one, we will title it. And you can use a variety of things. You can also upload media. You can upload notes, an image, videos. With the videos, it has to be either a video that you have created or something that you can download. And you can choose a file from your desktop, your computer, or from Google if you're using the Google Suite for Education to upload videos for your students. In addition to the media that you will upload to this section, you can also put different questions so that students, um, you know that students are going through the information that they're supposed to go through or have them to provide any feedback for you that you would like to ask your students. After the notes or the direct instruction portion of your lesson, you can add another screen for the practice and the independent practice. This is a good opportunity to provide students with the opportunity to engage in mathematical discourse so that they're getting a good understanding of the content, the information they're discussing with their classmates, they're seeing different perspectives and just solidifying their knowledge of the information that you're covering. One of the options that we really like is the card sort. So we will title this section Collaborative Practice and you can add the card sort. And with the card sort, you can structure it a variety of different ways. You can enter math text, images, or graphs so that students are matching different things. You can enter equations where students are solving equations and linking it or matching it with its solution or the solution type. So there's a variety of different ways that you can provide students with the opportunities to engage in the math and to also have discourse with their classmates. If you wanted to add more than one component to the screen, you could add multiple choice or text response so that students are uh, writing down or typing in the information that they're discussing with their classmates. And even though all students, if you are a one-to-one -one school, have their own device, you can structure it so that students are discussing with either their shoulder partners or their face partners or if they're in groups or if you move the desk however um, you have your class set. This provides you with the opportunity to increase that mathematical discourse that's happening in your class. And the last part that we're going to add is the reflection or the closure. And one of the components that we really like for the reflection or the closure is the sketch. So students have the opportunity to sketch anything that represents their thinking. So they can sketch a smiley face to show that they really understand the information that has been presented to them or the, activ the activities that they've been engaging in. You can also add multiple choice questions to ensure that students have an idea, a good understanding of the information, or it gives you the opportunity to solicit feedback so that you can see what the students are thinking. You can provide them with an opportunity to provide text if they have questions about the information or anything that they may not understand. This reflection part with these components will help you to gather that feedback to guide your instruction in the future. Once you have added all of the components that you would like for your lesson, you can select preview in the upper right hand corner and you can go through the different screens to see the the screens that the students will see when they're working on the assignment. Now for these, we did not add a lot of things, but you can play around with activity builders so that you can build it so that it is conducive to what you are trying to produce for your class. And once you have verified that this activity is how you want it structured, you will go to publish. And from here, you can assign it to your students. Um, you, it, will either give you a code that you can provide for your students, they will go to student.desmos.com and type in that code, or if you have linked your Desmos account with Google, you can send it to your students through Google Classroom. And you can also preview it through here. There's also an option for teachers to see a dashboard where you can see the students in live time and how they are progressing through the different parts of the lesson that you have created or the activity that you created so that you can provide feedback as they 
are progressing through the lesson. Thanks so much for watching. Be sure to like, comment, or reply to one of our other videos, or share the playlist below. Subscribe to our channel and enable notifications so that you don't miss out on the next episode. Don't forget to check out our other resources like Discast Podcast and see what else is going on in Horry County Schools. Be sure to follow at Deer Disses on social media or contact us via email or our blog.